SpaceX just built a mysterious vertical structure at Massey's test site, positioned right next to the static fire stand. Experts believe it's designed to test ship-to-ship -ship refueling on the ground, with a height that perfectly matches the new refueling ports on Ship 39, the first Foyer B-3 prototype. But why test docking between two starships here on Earth? Because lunar missions require orbital refueling to work, and SpaceX wants to validate the entire system before attempting it in space by mid-2026. Could this ground-based setup be the breakthrough that finally makes moon landings possible? Let's dive right in. On December 13th, observers spotted something unusual rising at Massey's site. A massive steel frame structure mounted directly onto the existing test stand, positioned dangerously close to the flame trench. The structure features a dense grid of steel members at its base, clearly engineered for extreme loads. From different angles, it reveals a D-shaped profile from the side and a rectangular face from the front. But here's what caught everyone's attention. The upper section includes additional framing designed for pipes and interface hardware that hasn't been installed yet. What exactly is SpaceX preparing to connect? The answer started becoming clearer on December 20th when a second vertical gantry-like structure appeared nearby. Then late that same night, SpaceX moved something absolutely massive. A horizontal assembly made of multiple steel panels and beams stacked together like a giant truss wall. The structure stood roughly 10 to 15 meters tall, so wide and heavy that SpaceX needed two self-propelled crawler vehicles, each equipped with hundreds of wheels, just to transport it under cover of darkness. This wasn't routine equipment. This was infrastructure for something fundamentally new. Now let's connect the dots. This vertical frame looks remarkably similar to the Booster Quick Disconnect Gantry at Pad 2, except it's been rotated into a vertical orientation specifically for the ship. Its primary function appears to support fueling, autogenous pressurization, and fluid connections during static fire tests. Combined with the Ship Quick Disconnect V3 system already installed at Massey's, this setup allows SpaceX to test the actual physical and fluid interfaces between the ship and ground systems under realistic conditions. Why does this matter for lunar missions? Because Raptor 3 engines operate at significantly higher chamber pressures with increased propellant flow rates compared to Raptor 2. Testing these systems on the ground eliminates unknowns before committing to orbital operations. But several industry experts are proposing a far more intriguing theory. This structure could actually test ship-to-ship -ship refueling concepts right here on Earth. The frame's height appears deliberately sized to interface with the new refueling ports on Ship 39, which is the first true Starship V3 prototype. If this interpretation is correct, SpaceX may be preparing to validate tanker-to-depot docking mechanics on the ground well before attempting the first full demonstration in orbit, currently projected for mid-2026. Think about the implications. Ground-based testing means SpaceX can iterate rapidly, identify interface problems, refine docking procedures, and validate fluid transfer systems without the enormous cost and complexity of orbital test flights. Here's where it gets even more interesting. The current structure isn't fully complete, and in theory, it could accommodate two ships on the platform simultaneously. However, that would require substantial additional reinforcement embracing to handle the combined weight and thrust loads. If SpaceX successfully demonstrates this capability, Massey's site transforms from a simple static fire stand into a critical testing hub for one of the most technically challenging aspects of the entire Artemis architecture, orbital propellant transfer. Meanwhile, Ship 39 itself is making rapid progress. SpaceX recently added autogenous pressurization raceways to the integration stand, external lines that allow Starship to repressurize its main propellant tanks using methane and oxygen gas tapped directly from the Raptor engines. This prevents tank collapse during ascent when six Raptors are draining propellant at full throttle. According to the current schedule, Ship 39 will undergo cryogenic testing later this week or early next week, return to the production site for engine installation, then head back to Massey's for static fire testing. This entire campaign is expected to peak in early January, marking one of the most comprehensive ship-only test sequences SpaceX has ever attempted. And it's not just Ship 39. 
Booster 19 is being stacked at breakneck speed and should roll out to Massey's for pressure testing within the next couple of weeks. Over at Pad 2, progress is accelerating just as fast. On December 21st, workers transported a new actuator for the chopsticks back to the site. SpaceX had previously removed the left chopstick actuator, the hydraulic unit responsible for opening and closing the catch arms, and shipped it to Sanchez's site for upgrades. With that work complete, the hardware is being reinstalled. The Orbital Launch Mount 2 continues advancing toward operational readiness, with crews conducting critical tests on the hold-down arm protective doors, verifying their ability to withstand exhaust flow and acoustic loads from Super Heavy's 33 Raptor engines. One technical detail that deserves attention, Pad 2 uses a completely redesigned propellant connection system. Unlike earlier pads that relied on a single quick disconnect for the booster, Pad 2 employs two dedicated systems, one for liquid methane, one for liquid oxygen. This separation improves reliability and reduces complexity during fueling operations, and it's a change directly reflected in the Booster Fee 3 design. These aren't minor tweaks. These are fundamental architecture improvements designed to support the launch cadence SpaceX needs for sustained lunar operations. But there's another critical upgrade happening that doesn't get nearly enough attention, the Air Separation Unit, or ASU. Construction at the ASU site has been moving aggressively throughout December, taking advantage of the gap before Flight 12 to push infrastructure work forward. After securing environmental approvals in July 2025, SpaceX completed land clearing, site preparation, and structural work. Now they're installing core equipment, large air compressors with bull gears driving multiple compression stages, critical motors, and major components transported overnight from the port of Brownsville. This marks the transition from foundation work into installing actual cryogenic distillation hardware. Once operational in 2026, the ASU will produce liquid oxygen, Starship's primary oxidizer, along with liquid nitrogen and purge gases directly from atmospheric air using cryogenic distillation. This eliminates Starbase's dependence on hundreds of cryogenic tanker truck deliveries, which has become one of the biggest logistical bottlenecks. When the ASU comes online, it enables faster tank farm refills, increases site autonomy, reduces supply chain risk, and most critically supports the high launch cadence SpaceX is targeting with Starship V3, potentially dozens of flights per year. For lunar missions requiring multiple orbital refueling operations, this infrastructure becomes absolutely essential. Overall, 2026 is shaping up to bring the biggest transformation Starbase has seen since SpaceX first acquired land in Boca Chica back in 2014. We're witnessing the evolution from an experimental test site into a fully industrialized launch complex built for Starship at operational scale. But with rapid expansion comes scrutiny. The latest controversy involves the Wall Street Journal and the Flight 7 explosion from January 16, 2025, nearly a year ago. On December 21st, the WSJ published an article claiming FAA documents showed the explosion posed far greater danger than disclosed particularly to commercial aircraft over the Caribbean. The report alleged debris could have caused catastrophic damage to airplanes, that SpaceX failed to immediately notify the FAA, and that risks would escalate significantly as Starship ramps toward 200 to 400 launches annually. SpaceX responded forcefully, posting directly on X. Yet another misleading story by the WSJ. The reporters were clearly spoon-fed, incomplete, and misleading information from detractors with ulterior motives. The company reaffirmed that no aircraft were ever at risk and all debris remained fully within pre-coordinated hazard zones established with the FAA and U.S. Space Force. This pattern of external pressure and scrutiny will likely intensify as SpaceX approaches operational status, making transparent communication and safety documentation more critical than ever. So what does this actually mean for lunar missions? That vertical structure at Massey's represents a fundamental shift in strategy. By validating ship-to-ship -ship docking on the ground first, SpaceX compresses the learning curve before risking orbital demonstrations. Every interface tested here translates to higher confidence when these systems need to work in lunar orbit with astronauts depending on them. The timeline is aggressive, ship 39 testing in January 
ASU operational in 2026, Pad 2 Ready in mid-2026 brings orbital refueling attempts. These aren't isolated milestones. They're interconnected pieces NASA needs for Artemis. If SpaceX demonstrates ground-based docking capability in the coming months, it fundamentally de-risks the entire moon program. We're watching Starbase evolve from experimental facility into the industrial foundation for sustained lunar operations. 2026 will reveal if this approach works at scale. What do you think? Will ground-based refueling tests succeed before orbital attempts? Drop your thoughts in the comments. If this breakdown added value, hit that like button and share it with anyone following SpaceX's progress. Subscribe to Space Update 24 hours so you don't miss Ship 39's test campaign next month. We'll cover every development as Starbase becomes humanity's gateway to the moon. Flight 11 proved both stages can return from space under precise control, hovering at exact positions. Elon Musk then dropped one word that set the timeline, springtime. But here's the breakthrough. SpaceX discovered they don't need Pad B's full orbital mount completed. The chopsticks can catch ship and simply lower it onto a mobile stand below. Could this game-changing approach accelerate the spring 2026 target even further? Let's dive right in. Right after Musk posted about the hypersonic hover, one question dominated the conversation. Someone asked directly, when do you think the tower will catch ship? His answer, one word, springtime. Not maybe next year or we'll see, just springtime. That single word confirmation means we're looking at a concrete window between March and May 2026, and it aligns perfectly with Musk's earlier prediction that the attempt would happen between Flight 13 and 15. The timeline actually makes sense when you break it down. If Flight 12 launches in late December or early January, Flight 13 could realistically occur by March. But here's the critical variable that determines everything. Flight 12's performance. This mission represents the full debut of Starship 5-3, featuring hot staging integration, refined grid fins on Super Heavy, upgraded Raptor engines across both stages, and an optimized heat shield design.